Hey guys, in this video we'll be going over the Barbuck. The Barbuck is one of the many types of lurkers in the Jack and Daxter games, but is also the most common. Being that it is the most common, it is also the most representative of what people have in mind when thinking of a lurker. They are the ones terrorising villages, and can be found almost everywhere in the Precursor Legacy. The Barbuck has a magenta coloured coat, with a darker shade of magenta for its mane, and the tufts around its wrist and ankles. The hands, feet and chest are a paler colour, showing its skin compared to the magenta fur. As with the other lurkers, it has the same yellow eyes and spurs that protrude from its lower jaw. You can also see that it has a large collar and a ring. This could be used to attach a chain to, presumably by Gol or Maya. They also share some similarities to our real world gorillas. The way that they stand, walk, run and pound their chest seems to be inspired by them. In the snowy mountain level you will see a variation of the barbuck known as the yeti. They are a blue colour and wear gloves and boots with an animal pelt on its back that covers its mane. Another variation of the barbuck are the ones that operate the vehicles. They can be seen wearing these goggles instead. And Daxter is where we meet Bruta for the first time chronologically. He also appears quite a lot in Jack 2. He is a barbuck lurker who speaks and plays an important role, however we will go over Bruta in a separate video. Back to Jack 2 we see Barbucks a few times in the game, mainly when we are freeing them from the Crimson Guard who captured them and were transporting them to be used as slave labour under Baron Praxis's orders. The first time we free them they are taken to Brutus trinket stand and the second time we take them to sewer pipes so they can make their escape. The Barbucks have set up a village in the area known as the dig site, however the Crimson Guard began digging for Eco and started enslaving them. Under orders from Kor, we clear out the dig site, but however we unknowingly fell for his plan, we drive out the guards and the metalheads moved in, thus terrorising the lurkers even more. In this area we can see the barbucks again operating the balloons with the trapeze wires. As you can see, things have changed in Jack 2. We are now allies with the lurkers. As I mentioned in my video on the lurkers as a whole, this change might be from not being under control by a dark eco sage and thus no longer corrupted by it. When they were hostile, they were charged towards you for an attack. If they land a hit, they will then pound their chest, and then get ready to attack again. To combat this, you just need to land one swift hit to take care of them, but not the Yeti and Snowy Mountain. They are relentless, and will pursue you until you leave the area completely. If you come out of reach of the Barbuck, they will pound their chest in anger, or simply shrug and walk away. The way they handle combat seems very simple minded, however they show incredible intelligence with the way that they operate vehicles and machinery. They also have made quite a large number of buildings and other structures that they use. Overall the Barbuck are a very important lurker in the series, crucial in the role they played for Golden Meyer and Baron Praxis, however sadly this was not by choice. And that's my overview of the Barbuck, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.